Hello again, and welcome back to Educator.com's Advanced PHP with MySQL course. In today's lesson, we're going to be introducing the concept of sessions. Particularly, we're going to be, in particular, we're going to be going over what a session is, and then we're going to talk about uh, two different kinds of ways that you can manage sessions. One is a client-side session, one is a server-side session. Uh, then we're going to talk about how PHP, uh, how to implement sessions in PHP, which is a type of server server-side session, um, and that's going to involve a discussion on what a session ID is, uh, how sessions work in PHP, uh, a couple of a method and a new super global we're going to introduce that allows you to work with sessions in PHP, and then we're going to talk about how to access and delete data within a session, which is the state um, of a particular session, and then also we're going to finish up with some comments on how to configure sessions in PHP. So first off, what is a session? Well, on the web, um, a session basically refers to a series of related uh, communications <coughs> between a web client and a web server. For example, when you log into a website, uh, for example, Amazon.com to go shopping, and you have your uh, shopping cart, uh, when you add an item to your cart and you go to the next page and you add another item to your cart, each of those sort of separate requests, um, HTTP requests, or separate transactions are linked together. Uh, the website knows that when you um, add an item to your cart and you go to the next page and add another item to the cart, that both items will be in the cart. So um, basically it links those together and it does so over a specific period of time as well, which is another um, key element. So sessions are defined uh, both by the two parties communicating. So a session occurs between a particular web client and a particular web server, as well as a time period. Um, sessions are time relevant. For example, maybe you have a, a banking website that you've gone to and it'll give you a warning after 10 minutes that your session is about to time out. Um, basically what that means is, is that uh, uh, sessions have a temporal element to them and they are confined to not only uh, communication between two parties but also communication between two parties over a certain amount of time. Now that time can be something that um, explicitly times, that times out and a session automatically ends, or it can be something that can, a session can be explicitly ended either by a server or a client. Uh, so basically, sessions are used to link multiple HTTP transactions. Uh, an example of that would be when you log into a website with your username, and then each page that you go to on the website, it might say, hello, Matthew, for example, at the top of the page. It knows that um, you've logged in and that your name is Matthew. And so every time you view a new page, it's basically linking those HTTP um, requests and responses together to know that they're all part of a single session. Uh, additionally, sessions are used to preserve um, data over multiple transactions. A perfect example of that is a shopping cart. Um, when you add multiple items to a shopping cart, you might do so on two or three different um, PHP pages, for example. Well, in order to, um, when you go to finally view cart to check out, to have track of all three, let's say you added three items to your shopping cart, in order to keep track of all of that, that state has to be kept somewhere. It has to, um, the session has to know that you've added maybe item 1001, 1002, and 1003 to your shopping cart. Uh, because HTTP, as we learned in our uh, session on, lesson on cookies, is a stateless protocol. Um, it doesn't know between one transact, one HTTP request and the next um, about any other um, HTTP requests. We have to maintain that state somewhere. Um, data or state that is preserved between a series of these HTTP transactions, for example, adding multiple items to your shopping cart, uh, will, will be referred to as session data. And what you may have realized uh, in just that short description of sessions is that we've actually already uh, been implementing a type of session. We've been implementing a, a client-side session. Um, and we did have done that in our web store application where we basically used cookies to track the status or the state of a particular shopping cart. So basically every time uh, a user added a new item to their shopping cart, we would set another cookie with an item that has the cookie's name is the item ID and then set its value equal to the quantity added. And basically we would update, add and delete and remove these cookies in order to maintain the state um, of the shopping cart. This is called a client-side session because the state data or the session data is stored on the server. In this case, it's the uh, excuse me, it's stored on the client. Uh, in this case, it's stored in the form of cookies, which, as we know, are um, basically uh, name-value pairs that a server um, sent, sends to a client that a client will save somewhere on the client computer, hence storing that data, and then it will basically send that information back to the server on each request. Uh, so. 
this is uh, typically accomplished or is accomplished via cookies, and that's known as a client side session. Uh, a server side session, which is what we're going to be discussing and what is the functionality that PHP provides, is um, it provides the same sort of functionality except that the session data is going to be stored by the web server. So instead of storing your shopping cart data in a bunch of cookies on the client side that get passed back and forth between the client and the server, um, your, se your session data is, is going to be stored on the server typically in a file um, or maybe even a database or maybe even in RAM. If there's a limited number of, of uh, users connecting, um, you might have the uh, capacity on your web server to just store all of a client's information in RAM. So basically, instead of um, having a cookie that might be called 1001 equals 1, you might have a text file somewhere called oops, that basically just stores that same text data. So this is the file name, and this would be the file contents, which would be the same thing. This information could also be stored in a database and RAM as well. So basically now we're moving the um, state of the uh, session from the client into the server. Uh, 